Hey y'all, welcome to In the Kitchen with Brooke Allen. So today I've got a mess going on in this kitchen, but I wanted to show you something today. I wanted to show you Italian herbs and cheese sub rolls, um, copycat like Subway. And so I had posted a pic on my Instagram and everybody went crazy about it. And so I gave out the recipe, but now I want to actually show, actually show you how to do it. I'm so excited today because I'm celebrating my daughter's 24th birthday. Her birthday is next week, but we're going to celebrate tonight. And so we just got a lot going on. I got different kind of food. I'm cooking mac and cheese and um, some Captain Crunch chicken for her birthday. And so I got a lot of irons in the fire, so to speak. So anyway, welcome back. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for joining me in the kitchen. I'm here by myself today, so I'm winging it and hoping this is going to work for you guys because I really want you to see this and I hope you enjoy it as much as we have already. And so I went ahead and did this earlier so the bread um, could go ahead and rise and so you wouldn't, I wouldn't have to wait for an hour and then pull, pull you back on. And so even though you guys don't know that, you know, I, I do sometimes I have to pause you and so it takes a lot of my time so I'm trying to think ahead and so anyway I'm hoping you can see everything I'm gonna give you some measurements today I know don't be shocked because <laughs> it might not happen too much with bread you kind of need to know so we're gonna start out I'm gonna get um ready and we're gonna go ahead and roll and I'll be in and out the camera so we're gonna start with seven and a half cups of flour now I'm trying to stand um, catty corn so you can see me real good but um, anyway so we'll get started you can tell I'm like a mad woman today I'm just like a mad woman in this kitchen I have been up and I have made uh, homemade chip chicken and dumplings I have made chicken salad I've cooked my noodles I've started bread and um, we just got so much to do so I'm rolling so okay flour we're gonna do seven and a half cups it's one two three So there's a little bit of flour left and I'll save that for dusting. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix in my dry ingredients and I've got a cheat sheet here. And if you ask me for the recipe and I send it to you, I'm gonna do it a little bit different because it calls for potato flakes and I omitted that, I left it out altogether. And so I'm gonna show you the same, I'm gonna leave it out. Um, I will post the exact recipe if you wanna follow it word by word, that's fine, um, or letter by letter. But I don't do that. So I didn't have potato flakes. I started out making it without and then I liked it. So I'm just going to keep it that way because it's what I like. All right. So we've got the seven and a half cups of flour. Then we're going to do, um, let's see, one quarter cup of sugar. So that's a fourth of a cup of sugar. Make sure this is my fourth. I'm going to grab the sugar and I'll be right back. So this is a quarter cup of sugar, and then what do we have? One tablespoon of salt. So I'm just putting in my dry ingredients, and I like to add a little bit more salt. So I did about a tablespoon and a half. Okay, and then we're just going to mix that in. You can sift it. I just used a whisk because it's quicker and I'm in a hurry today. All right. And then I'm going to make a well in my, my flour like that. Just a little whole area there. And I've got two eggs. These are our farm fresh eggs and they are room temp. You always want to use room temp. So when I learned to make bread flour, I'm sorry, to make bread, not bread flour, when I learned to make bread, I, I was so excited because I would always kill the yeast. And I knew I was doing something wrong, but I didn't know what. 
So I had a friend from church, and she said, come over here and let me show you how to make this bread. And I watched her, and I immediately knew what I was doing wrong. And one, I was using cold eggs. And then two, I was having my temperature for my water. It was way too hot, and it was killing my yeast. And every time I would do the whole recipe for the bread, and my bread wouldn't rise. And it's so disheartening when you've come that far, and then it doesn't rise. And so when I saw her and, and her make it, and she said, put your hand in this water and fill it. Let's go. And that was the temperature of like baby bath water is what I associated it with, what you would bathe your kids in. I was like, oh, well, no wonder. So I was killing my yeast. So that's why I wanted to come on here today and show you exactly, even though I sent you the recipe, because you may be like me. You may be the, a bread expert and say, Brooke, you're doing this, this, and this wrong. I'm still learning. So y'all just learn with me and teach me. You're welcome to have a comment and um, say, what you see that I could do to improve. I would love, love, love to hear from you. But this is working for me. So I'm going to show you. So you might be like me and want to make bread. And I have wanted to make bread for a long time because we're living in uncertain times. And we don't know what will be available to us from moment to moment. So um, I want to be able to make sandwiches and stuff and on our own, my own bread. And so I get really excited and passionate about this stuff. So you guys just bear with me. I hope you can feel the excitement anyway. And I hope that you'll make this and you'll feel just as excited as I am. And I gotta quit using my hands. <laughs> anyway, so I'm gonna rinse my hands because I've got a little bit of egg on them and then I'll get right back with you. All right, throw these shells away. Okay, and so then it calls for um, three cups of water. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two cups of warm water in here, and I'm going to proof my yeast with one of the cup. You don't want to use all your water to proof your yeast. We're just going to use a cup of it. So it calls for three cups of water. So we're going to go ahead and pour three, two in here. Not, I'm sorry, not three, but two in here. All right, here we go. Remember, lukewarm water, like a baby's water, baby's bath water. That's one. Two. Okay. Now, so now I'm going to set that to the side. Before that, I'll go ahead and pour my oil in. It calls for a fourth of a, I'm sorry, a third of a cup. And I just ran out of olive oil a while ago, so I'm going to open a new bottle. So hold on one second. Now, I'm using olive oil, but you could most definitely use canola oil or vegetable oil or whatever you have on hand. So don't... Um, Freak out if you say, I don't have any. Olive oil is all good. Improvise. All right, finally got that open. So we're going to use a, th a third, I think it says, yes. Um, third cup of oil. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in. Right in. Okay, and now we're going to proof our yeast. And so my water is warm. So I'm going to pour the water in there. And this actually calls for four tablespoons of yeast. Now I use in the jar, if you have the packets, just measure it out because I don't know. How many packets it would be so it's going to be four four tablespoons that's a lot of yeast it's a good yeasty bread so that's one two three and four and this is a huge recipe and what i do because i don't need all that i freeze half of it immediately because it's awesome to pull it out one day you're you're gonna have like a, a sandwich day and you want to make some subs and so you just pull it out and let it unthaw and rise, and then there you go. Just put it in your pans. It's amazing. So that's real good. Now I'm going to put my sugar in here. 
it calls for a fourth of a cup of sugar. So I'm going to just put a little bit of sugar in my yeast to help it proof. We already put the sugar in the, the flour mixture. So I'm just going to put a little bit in with my yeast. And that's just going to help my yeast to proof a little bit. So I'm just going to stir it up. And you want to let it sit for about five minutes. And this is going to tell you if your yeast is alive, if it is going to make your bread rise. So what you're going to look for is, I call it, I, I thought the first time I saw it become frothy, it looked like, like cauliflower heads, it kind of foamed up looking like that, but it's going to be real frothy and that's what you want. So we're going to let that sit for just a minute here and I'm going to go back over what we've done so far. Because I'm talking so fast today, I may have confused you. And I don't want you to be confused. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn this oven on while I'm over here. And I'll turn it on to 400 because the, the higher the heat that, that you have, the better off you're going to be because bread will dry out the longer it cooks, so we don't want it to be dry. Okay, so, so far we have seven and a half cups of bread flour. I use bread flour for this. And then we did two eggs, room temp, two eggs, two cups of water in your flour mixture, and one cup you're gonna to use to proof your yeast. You want it baby bath temp. The same way you would bathe the baby is the temperature you want for your yeast. That way it will not kill your yeast. It won't be too cold. It'll be just perfect and not too hot. Okay, and then we had a fourth of a cup of sugar. Put a fourth of a cup of sugar in there. And if you want to leave a little bit out to save some of that to proof your yeast, you can. I just went ahead and put the fourth in there and then just sprinkle a little bit more in my yeast because yeast grows from sugar makes yeast grow. So I just wanted to add a little bit to my yeast. Um, for proofing. And then we did one tablespoon of salt in which I added a little bit more. You have to be careful with salt because salt will also kill your yeast. So I have noticed that sometimes my, my bread tastes kind of flat. So I did put a little bit more in there. And the last batch that I just baked, it didn't bother it. So I felt comfortable to do that. And then a third cup of oil. And I used olive oil. And so we got that going on. And then I don't know if you can see this. But it is getting good and frothy. And so I'm going to give it just a minute or so um, more. And then, so after we mix this up, I'm going to use the mixer because it does it quick. And, it, and I'm in a hurry today, as y'all can tell. i got to slow it down. But anyway, so I'm going to use my mixer and just use a dough hook and let that incorporate it and get it all um, combined. And then we'll roll it out and I'll show you that. And then I have another one ready, so we'll be good to go. But on the herb mixture the recipe that i post is a little bit different also i have told you guys this from the beginning you guys and gals that every single recipe that i have i make it my own i visualize and see what's on the paper but then i i look around and say well i don't have that or I, you know i do have this so i tweak it for my kitchen for what i've got on hand because i don't want to go to the store just to make a recipe Sometimes you have to, but if I have something else that I can replace it with, I will do that. So that's what happened the other day when I was trying out this recipe. I had just gotten a bottle of Sazon, and um, Sazon is a, a Hispanic seasoning. Um, so, yes, and it's got everything in it. And so instead of cutting all the herbs up that it calls for, I just use this because not only does it have all the herbs in there, it has a little bit of seasoning and flavor to it. And it is amazing. And it, it surprised me how much it really is like, like the Subway restaurant. I mean, it tastes so point on. And so I'm going to keep on doing it. I'm not going to waste my time because herbs can be expensive. You can buy a whole bottle of this for literally like three bucks, if that. So good, good uh, substitute. So I'm going to use this and cheddar. And I just mixed the two together. I didn't measure. I just dumped some on a plate and 
shredded my, I used uh, a sharp, a New York sharp and a mild cheddar together because I like the, the bite of the sharp. So I mixed all that, the seasoning and the cheese together, and then we're going to roll our bread in that. And so that's going to be your herbs and cheese. So we got the yeast looking marvelous, marvelous. It's about to rise over my cup. So all I'm going to do is just dump it right in. Now you want to make sure that you get all that yeast out. I'll just kind of take my finger and scrape it around, get it all in the bowl. I'm going to dump this in the water, wash my hands, and I'm going to take y'all to the mixer, and we're going to mix it up. We'll get it on the mixer, and then I'll move the camera. If you don't have a mixer, you can do this by hand. You can just get a wooden spoon and start stirring it up until it makes a ball and then roll it out. So don't, don't get upset if you don't have a mixer or you can use a hand mixer even, you could. All right, so I'm gonna go to the stand mixer and then I'll be right back to get y'all. All Just got it on the, the mixer there, and it's just going. So we're gonna let it do its thing there. I'm gonna turn it up a little bit. I'm gonna come over here and see if I can't set this over here. All right. Pull this out a little bit so you can see it. All right. Now every few minutes, what I do. I just stop it and try to push some of that um, flour around. Now, a lot of people say don't do that because it will get it eventually. I'm just, like I said, in a hurry today. So I'm going to hurry. So we're going to mix it on up. Turn up that speed sign. I hope y'all are having a wonderful day. As you can see, I don't even have makeup on today. I've been in this kitchen since 3.30 this morning. I started... I did take a break and take a nap. <laughs> Got me a little bit of shut eye and then came right back at it. But it's a wonderful day here. It's cold and I'm so excited. So, so excited because it's getting that time of year to put your tree up and my husband won't let me. So I'm telling on him again and again. But anyway, it just feels like Christmas. The next week is supposed to be in the 70s, so maybe I'll get over it by then. I don't know. But today is a beautiful day. We're going to celebrate my daughter's birthday. And I'm so excited because God is so good. He's so good, y'all. I woke up this morning thinking, God, you've been so good to me. You ever just feel the goodness of God? Just You can just feel it. And I, I just thank Him because He's so good. So here we are. I can get off topic in a minute talking about my God. So y'all just bear with me. I mean, we got it going on here, so I'm going to go ahead and... Take it off. And then I'm going to bring it over there and then I'm going to bring you guys back over there with me. But let me get this over there first. I better move the camera before I get so much flour on my hand. I'm sorry, guys and gals. Let's see. All right. All right. So I'm going to put some flour on my hand. This is like a sticky mess. I'll just pull that off. Throw it in the sink there. And just dump it out. Well, it's a little bit sticky, but that's okay. I just dip my hands in flour and pull it out. All right. You can't even see that. So I'm gonna get it started and then I'm gonna move the camera because you need to see this for sure, for sure. Let's slide it back some. 
Well, I'm just making a mess, to be honest with you, as you can tell. I don't have any help from a man. All right, so we got our flour, I mean, got our dough <laughs> on a floured surface here on my counter. And if it sticks, just kind of go over with some more flour. I think I probably need all of this. I'll put some to the side so I can get my hands in it. Okay. All right, so we're just going to knead it. You really want to work your dough. Because that's what Miss Dorothea taught me that stretches the glutens and gets all the yeast worked in. So that's what we want to do. Get all that yeast worked in. Now the mixer does help that. It, it does. She likes to do hers by hand. But I think she's a professional. And I'm not yet. So while I practice... We're going to do it this way. <laughs> and she taught me to kind of go in a circle. However, my hand is still, like I said, not so used to this. So I just kind of work it any way I can and try to keep it in a circle. But it usually doesn't work. Okay. So that's about good. So see how big that, that is? So now what I'm going to do is just take this and we'll rinse my hand off real quick. Bowl. And you want a big bowl because it is going to rise. And I'm just going to oil my bowl. Still a little. A little bit of moisture in there. I'm just going to oil it. <laughs> I got flour everywhere. I'm looking at my shirt. I'm all floured up. And there's flour everywhere. So, I'm gonna oil my bowl. I just poured some olive oil in there. Just gonna oil it up so that as your dough rises, it won't stick to your bowl. All right. I'm gonna dry off my hand a little bit, and then I'm gonna just throw that in. And then we're gonna cover it with a bread towel. I've got one that I have already proofed. You're going to see it has risen so much. So I'm going to just swap it, put this bread towel on it. And I stick mine in the microwave because I've got my uh, my um, light on my stove. And so it's my microwave stays so warm. So it's a perfect place to let your bread rise. I'm going to just stick it in there. And then here we go. So let me get some of these. Got some bits. You can see that fell a little bit. Just throw this away and put out some fresh flour. So just gonna go in there and knock it down. Now I probably should have just like that much in one place but anyway okay so just dump it out like so and then I'm just going to show you about half of it I'm just going to show you what I'm going to do with half I am going to freeze it because we do not need all of that dough. So I'm gonna write on my little bag here sub dough, sub roll dough, and put today's date. So next time I've got some made. I'm just gonna pick it up and drop it in. Like so 
This is, I'm sorry, you guys can't see. This is amazing to have in hand. So you just do it like that. Put it in the bag, label it, and then pop it in the freezer. Then you'll pull it out when you want to use it, let it unfold, cut it, roll it, put it on your pan, it's good to go. All right, so we got our bread dough here. And I'm just going to take it and kind of cut it because you just want to make it, roll it up. So, for sub rolls. So, I'm going to show you my cheese. And this is what I do. I just, I told you how I did that. I did my shredded cheese with my seasoning. And, and I think that I will... Probably add a little bit more. There we go. And then I'm just going to roll my dough in it. Just kind of smash it in and roll it up. And the last time I was supposed to make little slits in it, but I didn't. But you can you can do that. And then I've got this loaf pan sub roll pan. I'm just going to put my rolls in there like that. So I'm going to get these done and then I'll show that to you. And you just want enough to go in there. Put as much cheese and seasoning on there as you like. We are, we love cheese. We are cheeseaholics. So I put a lot of cheese on mine. I like the bottoms to be good and covered. And then we'll go down, I think we got enough for four. The pan holds three, so I'll do one on a, a baking dish. See how I'm doing? I'm just smashing it in. I told y'all, I'm not a professional. <laughs> I've just started doing this, but I've become a monster, a bread monster. I love it. Nothing makes me feel better than to, when you're cooking and you say, I, can, I made that bread. So I'm so used to buying it, so making it for me is like total victory. Okay. So in a loaf. And there we go. And I've got one more. So I'm going to take the rest of that cheese. Now you could probably make smaller loaves. Mine's going to be kind of big. So if, if you can get an idea, it's going to make you about uh, six to eight sub rolls, the whole thing. This is half of it, and it's making four. So, okay. I'll just throw this on a pizza pan and let that rise. This probably is going to rise to be about the size of a French French bread size. But that's okay. We'll use it. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do is just cover these with my bread towel. Just covered it and I'm going to let it sit. For about 20 or 30 minutes till it rises and then we're going to pop it in the oven it's going to be beautiful okay so now that you see what's going on here i'm just going to let this bread proof and rise a little bit and as soon as it does we'll be ready to bake it and you're going to be seeing amazing things so hey y'all so the bread is rising and it's doing lovely things and so now I'm going to have to let it sit a little bit longer. And I wanted to do a part two. So I think that's what I'm going to do is take a break and let it finish rising, bake it off, and then do a part two showing you what it looks like after it's been cooked and giving you the rest of the instructions. So what do you guys think about that? I hope that'll be okay. It's just how my day is going today. And so that's what we're going to do. So we'll see you back 
don't forget to watch part two because you need to see the end of this. You need to see what happens. All right, so stay tuned.